The Super Bowl, a culmination of months of blood, sweat, and tears by teams and fans, resulting in the two best going at it in a winner-take-all game. It's the most watched televised event, and I think that's because it's only one game rather than a series of games like in hockey or baseball. So today, I'll be playing Tecmo Super Bowl, a football video game that many would call a cult classic and one of the best games on the NES. So let's huddle up and see if we can score a touchdown against time itself, or if it's all just nostalgia. Tecmo Super Bowl was released in 1991 for the Nintendo Entertainment System. It was the first sports game to ever use both actual NFL teams and real-life players that were on the rosters. It features the most exciting and riveting story in not only all of video games, but any piece of media ever. Just kidding. It's a sports game, remember? There's no story to be found here. While I'm a big football fan, I'm not so much a fan of football video games, or really sports games in general, so I haven't played very many aside from NFL Blitz, NBA Jam, or Mario Baseball, and those games don't quite follow the typical rules of the sport. For the most part, Tecmo Super Bowl plays by all the rules of football, except in a more simplified fashion. There are no penalties, and some other things are missing, like the two-point conversion. You can choose to play a single game, the Pro Bowl, or run through an entire season as one or more of your favorite NFL team as you try to make your way to the big game. I chose to play as the Dallas Cowboys to try and relive some of their old glory. The season is 16 games long, and if you're good enough, you can enter the playoffs and maybe even the Super Bowl. You start every game with a coin toss. You don't actually get to choose if you want heads or tails. It just kind of picks for you. The game is four quarters that are five minutes in length. But not an actual five minutes. The clock is moving so fast, so it's more like three. After the second quarter, you're treated to a nice little halftime show which features The Wave, Cheerleaders, Parachute Man, Cheerleaders, Blimps, Cheerleaders, Cheerleaders, Cheerleaders? It's silly, but these cutscenes actually made the game more enjoyable. Each team gets four pass plays and four running plays to use per game, and each down you get to pick one of these. Even though you get eight a game, after the game you can change up your playbook and take out the ones you don't like and put in new ones. But this is kind of frustrating. I really don't understand why you have to stick to the same eight plays for an entire game. Did the coach forget his playbook and he can only remember these eight? Does he not have a pen and paper to make up a new one? I just don't get it. Well, after you choose, you control one player on the field. On offense, it's the quarterback, then whoever you pass or hand the ball off to. When passing, you cycle through your receivers and throw it to whoever you find open. And when you catch, you then take control of the receiver and can take off running. The quality of the throw is completely random. There were times I had a man wide open with plenty of time to throw, but for some reason the QB would just throw it way off the route. It gets annoying quickly, especially when your computer opponent will make passes into double coverage and connect, but you can't even hit a wide open receiver. On defense, you take a guess as to which play the opposition will run, and you line up accordingly. You can cycle through and choose your position and your player. The rest is taken care of by the computer, but not really taken care of, because sometimes the computer will be caught sleeping and just let your opponent run right by them with the ball. Again, it's completely random, which seems to be a theme for this game, so it makes it less about skill and more about how much it can make you hate your computer AI. Interceptions and fumbles also fall into the how did this happen category. There were times I'd have two of my players on an X where the opposing QB was throwing, but nope, no interception. These were the types of things that made the gameplay a lot less enjoyable. Offensive players can be injured, but defensive ones can't. If your player is injured, it will actually take them a few games to return, which is kind of a nice addition. I lost Emmett Smith before the playoffs, and it was a big blow to my team, so this forces you to keep an eye on your player's conditions throughout the season. It adds a little realism. I also like seeing the screen when the players do come back from injury. The song is catchy and the nurses are waving him off, and he runs all the way to the stadium. The game isn't very difficult, and it can be fun to play for one or two games. I actually lost the first four games straight, but then I got the hang of it, and you can pretty much follow the same formula each time and keep on winning, which is what ends up making the game feel monotonous. I did end up losing to those dirty 49ers in the NFC Championship but at least the game is somewhat realistic because the Bills made it to the Super Bowl and lost, just like the Bills of the 90s. Now I'm fully aware that the NES isn't going to give you jaw-dropping graphics, especially by today's standards, but this game was really half and half for me. I think the cutscenes while playing, that show off a big play or a touchdown, look really good. The opening when you start up the game looks fantastic and it really gets you pumped up to play, but the gameplay graphics themselves are rough, even by NES standards. 
Often there's just too much going on on screen so that the NES can't even handle it, and you're left with a blinky mess. It will definitely hinder you at times, especially during a kick return. The colors are also very bright, and they're constantly flashing, so playing this game for more than a half hour put a big strain on my eyes. The soundtrack is easily my favorite part about the game. There are so many cool and catchy songs, like the introduction song, which can only be described as radical. There is, however, one drawback. While playing the actual game, you only really hear one song over and over again. Sure, there are other songs like when a player gets injured, or when the refs go for a measurement, but they're so short, and other than those, prepare to hear the same song until it eats away at your very soul. If you're lucky enough to make it to the playoffs, then a miracle happens. The song will change! And I'm not sure if it just was the change of song, but the playoff music is awesome. It did a great job of creating tension for a win or go home game. Tecmo Super Bowl is a game I hear about all the time. It has a rabid fan base that is still playing tournaments to this very day and they're modding the game to include the NFL's current roster. And while playing a game or two can be fun, there really isn't much here to keep a new player interested, especially if they're not crazy about sports games. So I'd say steer clear of picking this one up, because I believe its praise comes down to nostalgia. As always, if you do enjoy playing the game, keep right on playing it, but I don't believe there is much appeal to new players in this day and age. Thanks for watching everybody, please like and subscribe, and remember, it's all fun and games.